Awesome. So thank you guys for joining my workshop on delegation. I just kind of wanted to give a quick overview of what delegation is and how you can start doing it and why it's going to become your secret weapon. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're talking about today, delegation. Um, so if you have any questions, just hold them to the end and then I'll get through them at the end. All right. So our first question that we need to answer really is what is delegation? And Wikipedia defines this as the assignment of an authority to another person to carry our specific activities, which is a pretty straightforward of delegation. You're taking a task from yourself and you're handing it to someone else so that you can get something done. So then we need to ask ourselves, why are we delegating? If we have things on our plate that need to get done, why would we hand that to someone else? I thought this quote really kind of answered that question. So the quote is, no person will make a great business who wants to do it all themselves or get all the credit. And that's Andrew Carnegie. Next, I have a quote from Napoleon Hill, who's an American author. He says, it is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping other people to succeed. I just felt like these really resonated with why someone would delegate. It's important to bring others into your plans so that you can succeed and vice versa, so that they can succeed as well, which we'll get into a little bit of that later on. So let's break down some quick snippets as to why we should delegate as managers. Why? The first answer to that is to get more done. Seems very simple and straightforward, but it is crazy how much more you can get done when you start to delegate. Next, you're not only just checking things off your list, but you're doing this to get important things done. So in order to move your team and your company towards success, you want to delegate so that you can get the important things done. Thirdly, it develops your team. Giving your team other items to work on gives them the ability to grow in their skills in a way that they otherwise would not be able to. Everyone should want to grow in their work. So it's important as a manager to give your team the opportunity that they need in order to grow. And fourthly, it keeps things moving while you're away and frees up your time. You can't trust your team to get things done by delegating when you're present, and you certainly won't be able to do so while you're away. So that's a really important thing and a good practice to start delegating while you're around so that when you're away, you can rest easy that your team has it under control. On the plus side of that as well, and this kind of frees you up to take other responsibilities from your manager as well. So it, it kind of goes down the chain of command. So all of these things obviously sound great, right? So you're developing your team, you're getting more things done, you're getting your important tasks done, and it gives you the ability to step away or work on other things that are more higher level. So we need to figure out how we start doing this so that you can start checking these off. Our first how is to know what not to delegate. So there are some things that are just better done by yourself. You need to start with these tasks to figure out which ones you're going to keep on your plate, which ones shouldn't be delegated to someone else. On the flip side of that, you need to determine what you will delegate. So creating that list of what you're not going to delegate will automatically give you a list of what you will delegate. This will be really helpful for you to kind of distinguish where different tasks will lie. Thirdly, you need to choose the right person. This is super, super important. You want to make sure that you choose someone to take something from your plate and that they're well equipped to do so. Not everyone is good at every task, so it's important to be thoughtful when you delegate instead of just passing to anyone on your team. This also kind of goes for your web development and design agency as well. It's really important to choose the right partner in this area because there will be things that you need them to do and things that you don't want them to do. So if you don't have the right match, it's going to be really hard to delegate those tasks to your web agency. Next, you need to delegate results and not the process. Basically what this one means is it's really important for your team to know that they have full responsibility when completing delegated tasks. You don't wanna get in the way and you should definitely be trusting whoever you're delegating to to bring the task through to the end. Next, you need to define your role. This kind of goes hand in hand with delegating results and not process. You want to make sure that your team knows exactly what your role is in delegating that task. Are you there for questions? Are you there to walk side by side with the person that you've delegated to? Are you there to sign off at the end? 
you need to let them know exactly where your role lands to set everyone's expectations accordingly. Next, you need to provide the right tools. If you delegate to someone, you don't give them everything they need to get the task done, you've already doomed them to failure, which you don't want to do. So make sure that when you delegate, you do so in a way that that person has the tools to complete their task. And this is especially important if you're a remote company. Communication via email and project management tools can be really tough. It makes communication a little bit wonky sometimes. So make sure that you set really clear deadlines, you give full explanations to what you're looking for, and that will kind of help ease any problems that might arise. Next, you need to establish a follow-up. So this is really important um, to set expectations as well. Establishing a follow-up is key, especially when you're just kind of starting to gel delegate work to someone. It's important after you've established your role and you've provided the right tools that you let that person know that follow-up will happen and that you have a date and time of when that's going to happen so that they know what to have prepared along the way. And lastly, if you want to learn to grow yourself as well as your teammates, you need to learn to let go. Handing your team tasks through delegation is an amazing way to increase productivity and growth for your whole team. If you can't let go, then everyone's going to be stunted and you don't want that. So start practicing letting go, handing tasks to your team, and trusting that you've trained them well enough to know what they're doing. So I bet there's probably some of you maybe asking, well, what if I have no team? If you don't have a team and you're working on big web projects, it's important for you to delegate to your web design and development agency. We can help you with whatever tasks that are spilling over. So that was my very brief look into delegation, why it's important, how you can start to do this if you aren't doing it now, and why it's important to delegate to your web design development team. So does anyone have any questions? Yay, thank you. <laughs> I am curious if you have some examples of things, you know, in your experience um, that are better to not delegate, as you mentioned, and maybe some that people tend not to delegate, which they ought to, you know, what are, what are the mistakes that people make? Yeah, for sure, that's a great question. So in my experience, it, it's really good to look at your job as sort of like a circle. So there are some really core things that maybe only you should be doing. For example, like let's take my title. So as a director of operations, there are things like finances that I certainly don't want to delegate out to someone else. However, within the scope of being a director of operations, there are also things that happen within our office or our studio, like updating handles on social media so um, or updating the descriptions on our social media so that would be something that maybe would be an outer circle thing and that maybe would overlap with another team member so that would be a good thing to delegate to someone it's a simple task if someone knows how to do it and it also kind of overlaps with their job description as well and that's a good thing to delegate yeah thanks nikki i have one question Mm -hmm. And it's about kind of getting your thoughts and perspectives on if you happen to be sort of, you know, maybe lower on the, the hierarchy scale. And so you're normally the person who things get delegated to. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any peers or, or underlings, how might you approach the process of like finding ways to delegate work if you end up being swamped too? Does that go up the chain? And do you talk to your manager about sending things back up in that direction? to go elsewhere or how, how would you manage a situation like that? That's a really, really good question. I think that's probably a very big question in the world of business of like, do you manage, uh, delegate upwards? And I've, I've seen mixed reviews on how to do this. My personal opinion would be one, if you're overwhelmed, you definitely need to let your manager know. That's super important for them to be aware of what you have on your plate and why things aren't getting done. And then once you've done that, it, it's definitely the manager's responsibility to make sure that one, you have what you need to complete things. And if you're overwhelmed, they are re-delegating to someone else on the team. So it shouldn't be your responsibility to delegate up to your manager. It should be your manager's foresight to know, okay, we're not going to have enough time for JT to complete something. So that means it's now my responsibility to help 
sort of uh, lighten his load and move that to another team member or take that on myself. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. do, Nikki, do you think that uh, delegation can ever apply just within like colleagues? You know, you're not managing someone technically, but maybe for whatever reason, maybe you're, you have too much to do or you think that they would be a better fit or whatever, you know, how could that work? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that can, I think that that's a really good way to have a team. Like, I think if people aren't doing that, then you're not really operating within a team. So delegating to coworkers, someone who's maybe at the same level of, as you, needs to be done in a really specific way. So you need to make sure that you fully explain what's happening with your plates and why maybe something's not fitting. Two, you should probably ask the person if they feel that they have enough bandwidth to do that thing or if they're interested in taking on that specific task if you're passing something fully to them. And three, I think that obviously the manager should be involved in something like that, especially if it's like a bigger thing, like you're no longer gonna be doing this aspect of your job. But I definitely think that that creates sort of a back and forth flow between team members that builds a lot of trust within the team as well, because you know, okay, well that person had my back that time, so I have not as much as time, so let me help them sort of a give and take the mentality. And I think that that's really, really beneficial for working better together as a team. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'm Any just questions? always stuck about, uh, sorry, I just thought yeah. of something. It, I'm always stuck with how to like delegate and have things stay delegated. <laughs> mm. Like, because when when you delegate something and then somebody has like a question that's kind of a big question which happens like there's kind of a temptation or a tendency or both to kind of take it back you know mm. like i have to do the first part of this because you don't understand how so right yeah i think I think that that is a good example of not quite knowing how to delegate properly. I think if you're going to delegate a task to someone, you need to obviously provide the right tools. So that person needs to be able to understand or at least have the pieces that they need in order to complete a task. And I think that there is also a difference between getting someone up to speed and training them in a way where they can take tasks from you and also just delegating. Yeah. Them. So that's a good distinction, I think, is making sure that you actually, if you're going to start delegating to someone, having that process with them, that's maybe a little more walking side by side with them. And then once they're up to speed, then mm -hmm. that makes sense. Actually yeah. just delegating to them in a way where you can quickly just pass things off to them. Great question. Any other questions? That's all for me. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining and uh, listening to my quick overview on delegation, um, something that's super important. And I'm glad that you had the time to join us. If you have any other questions that you think of later, you can reach out to me at nikki at cantilever.co. And thanks again.